This, my friends, is the Devile Mania. Well, you might have heard about it before as it was launched about two to three months ago. I didn't manage to get around to trying this speaker out until now because I was so busy with everything else. But with Devile stuff, the shelf life tends to be quite long. So even if I'm late to the game of reviewing this, it is still going to be relevant for quite a few more years. And given how smashingly good this sounds like, I suspect it will be relevant for a very long time. Nowadays, people use social media to research on the stuff that they're considering to spend money on. And if you're one of those, let me give you the short answer to your question up front. This is a definite buy if you can afford it. The mid-range performance is great for something that is just a basically two-way speaker and it allows for very clean vocals. The treble is clean and there is no degree of harshness or hardness in the treble edge so you can really listen to it at really high volumes and not get sick of it. The last sound factor is of course the bass, right? For Tevile, it's always about the bass. It is incredible. This is a Bluetooth speaker and a battery powered one at that. And the amount of bass that it can throw out will put a lot of other full size mains powered speakers to shame. This is Devile. If you want a true blue Devile that you can bring outdoors at the cheapest price amongst the whole entire Devile lineup, this is the one that you will have to go with. The bass is audible, it is loud, and it is even visible. Just look at the bass drivers go. Now that the upfront summary is over, let me give you a caveat of sorts and go a little bit deeper into the review. First, the caveat. This is crazy expensive. Now, there are Bluetooth speakers coming out literally every day that cost one-tenth or even one-twentieth, 5% of the price of this Devil A Mania. Seriously, I mean it, you can have a $100 budget and choose from a huge plethora of battery-powered Bluetooth speakers that sounds great. Now, sure, you don't get the same quality of sound, but if I were to tell you that you can get maybe like 10 JBL Flip 5 Philip 6, for the price of one of these, it is gonna make your decision really, really hard. I mean, if you want it loud, I'm sure 10 JBL Flip 6 are gonna be louder over a larger space than the Mania itself. Or even looking at the Sonos One setup, you can get a pair of the Sonos Ones with a sub Mini from Sonos, and that will give you better sound for maybe about the same price. Then again, that would hardly be quite portable, right? Or how about maybe even two Sonos Move, the portable Sonos from, or uh, well, the portable speakers from Sonos. And they're still gonna be cheaper than a single Devil A Mania. And with Bluetooth and built-in battery packs, and they are also definitely loud. Then again, all comparisons so far are not like-for-like -like comparison. So similarly, we can say that you could get 10 Toyota Prius for one Ferrari Roma, you are still gonna get to work in a price. Although the Roma might get you there a couple of minutes earlier, but we are completely missing the point of a Ferrari. Now, even if you could get a hundred Prius for the price of a Roma, you still aren't getting a Ferrari. The build quality and the joy of ownership is completely different, right? Between any other speakers and the Devil A Mania. So ask yourself the question first, if you are going to be listening within the parameter supported by a regular battery powered Bluetooth speaker, then yes, the Devil A Mania makes no sense. But if you are a wireless audiophile, if build quality matters to you, if the extra loudness and sound quality and the bass quality matters to you, if you're really going to enjoy your music and need every little edge you can get out of your equipment, there is literally no peer to the Devil A Mania. Well, at least not from what I have at my disposal. Now, sometimes it's hard to give you an idea of what great sounds like in a review format like this over YouTube. I can use words to describe it, but it's something like telling you how sashimi tastes like if all you've been eating your whole life is canned sardines or canned tuna. Now I can record something over my mic setup, which will be pretty close in my opinion, but it is ultimately gonna show you how your speakers sound like since you're playing it over your speakers or your device, right? So to cut away the variables of your setup 
and the limitation of my vocabulary, I will run frequency response switch. So what frequency response switch are is basically a series of tones played at the exact same amplitude all the way from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. And in perfect replication of perfect speaker and perfect mic in the perfect room, the resulting curve of what is picked up by the mic should be flat throughout. Now, of course, I would say that no room is perfect and your room will be different from mine. And sometimes the room eats up the extra frequencies. Sometimes it boosts some frequencies undesirably and no speaker is perfect. Smaller speakers like this will actually have difficulties producing the lower frequencies. Or if the tweeter isn't fed with enough power, the higher frequencies tend to roll off and cut off a little bit earlier. Now, there are many factors which will cause the curve to look very much like the stock market rather than a straight line. And most importantly, also software, right? A lot of speakers nowadays employ software correction. The Devilay Mania is no exception. There are onboard mics on the Devilay Mania and it continuously listens out to the sounds being projected by the speaker, bouncing off the room or the walls or the surroundings that it is in, and it tries to correct some of those frequencies. This feature can be turned off by turning off the mic with a physical switch on the speaker itself, but that will also turn off Alexa, which is built into the AA Mania. Now the software DSP, uh, Digital Signal Processing for short, also plays around with the frequencies when you are playing at different volumes. And it also reacts to the material that is being played through the speaker. If you try to push, for example, a very bass heavy song at too high a volume, it will breach the limits of the bass drivers. Then the speaker, the DSP, will start tempering the bass volumes down. If you play at lower volumes and there's a lot more power available, it will provide more of a bass boost to the lower frequencies from the speakers. Okay, so lesson time over. I hope to have helped you understand a little bit better about how modern active speakers work. Now let's get to the frequency response chart. Now the curve that I'm going to be showing you here in orange is actually the frequency response curve for the Devil Mania. Of course, we wanted a flat response curve, but we don't have it, right? You will notice that the bass frequencies below 50 Hz starts to cut off and the treble frequencies above 7 kHz will also cut off pretty aggressively. The Mania is rated for 30 Hz up to 20 kHz. Well, based on the volume that I tested at, you will still hear things down to 20 Hz and up to even 20 kHz as it is above 70 dB at the base end and above 50 dB at the treble range. Definitely audible. Now, it all depends on the volume you're playing at and the distance between you and the speaker. But what this chart shows is that the frequency response is actually pretty flat for most listening material. Now, I tested from bass heavy tracks and from the slow motion video that I'm going to be showing you here, you can see that the cones, these drivers, the bass drivers here are thoroughly activated. Now, even if you can't hear them, you know that they are working hard and you can see them move. Now, these are a pair of horizontally opposed woofers, one on either side of the speakers, arranged and played in opposing direction such that it will cancel out vibrations that will smear the sound and make the speaker move and jump about. Now, these two drivers are amped by two individual amps at 38 watts each, each, right? That's a total of 76 watts of power for the bass in a battery powered speaker. But it's not done, right? <laughs> because for vocals, you need mid range, and for most other non bass instruments, you will need treble. Now, these are powered by four aluminum drivers, and they are all um, fed with 25 watts amplifier each. That's another total of 100 watts of power for a grand total of 176 watts of power coming from this tiny sphere of about seven inches uh, per here at the widest. Now the four mid-range drivers are arranged out to the four corners of the speakers at 90 degrees uh, to one another. So they are capable of projecting sound all around in a 360 degree field with alternating drivers firing left and right channel. So this would be right, this would be left, this would be right. And you, you, wherever you are relative to the speaker, you will find stereo imaging. Now, although this does mean that two out of the four position will have stereo imaging flipped. 
But for sounds that are supposed to come out from the center, it does come out from the center. And for vocals, they're supposed to be coming out from the center. Now, if you listen to some of the recordings from Billie Eilish, for example, you're going to be in for a real treat and you get to hear her voice smoothly projected from the speaker. For example, try the track Wish You Were Gay, right? Her voice comes across strong and intimate and you will thoroughly enjoy the song from the first second her voice comes out. And at the moment when the bass tracks kick in, you will get waves of bass notes flowing all over you. Now, I was really enjoying the Devil A Mania with that particular track, which really allows this speaker to shine. Now, one thing that you have to note is that the speaker won't be able to pair up with another mania to be used as a pure true stereo setup. This is unlike the Phantom series, the Phantom, yep, yeah, I have that in the corner, right? Where you can buy another Phantom, which is right there, and you set it in physical left and right location. The stereo imaging is true stereo, physical true stereo, whereas the stereo imaging from the mania is gonna depend on this cross stereo setup. Now from the sound quality being belted out, it exudes strength and the quality is more than adequately projected in the build quality itself. Now the version I have here is the Paris the Opera version. Now it costs 400 Singapore dollars more than the regular version. So this is $1,790. Technically, there is no difference between the Paris the Opera version and the regular version from a technical perspective. Now visually, you're gonna get all these matte gold trim, right? So take a closer look at this. Matte gold trim all around these drivers up here, right? And But th that's about it. Your extra couple of hundred bucks is actually going towards the gold color. And mind you, this is not just gold color. This is real gold. The gold accents that you see on the speakers are actually real gold plating. But if you want black, right, where the fabric here is black, you've got to go for the regular version. But in the box, the Paris the Opera version, it actually does come with this charging dock. It, they call it a wireless charging dock. It uses pins. So if you can see here, right, these are the pins and it goes against the contacts, right, at the base of the speaker right here. Um, yeah, here, right? Well, honestly, it is not exactly easy to um, set because there are the pins here. you got to align the speaker. Now, the pins are actually retractable, so it's not that bad. You don't actually have to poke it in and it can go in at any direction, but this dock itself would have cost you an additional 129 Singapore dollars if you do not get the Opera de Paris version. Now, if you ask me if I had to pay $129 for this, I probably wouldn't actually spend the money on the dock. It's not exactly wireless. It's, well, it's still pin connects, which brings me to the point of charging. Now, the battery inside this speaker is rated for 3,200 milliamp hour. The capacity is all right. It charges at 12 volts, 2.5 amps over the PD protocol, and that's about 30 watts of charging. A full charge will give you 10 hours of battery life. I've not managed to run this guy down from 100 to 0%, but safe to say that there will probably be some caveats to achieve 10 hours of battery playtime, uh, play uh, maybe like if you're only playing at 50% volume. Now, I've also noticed that if you directly plug in a USB-C cable into the speaker, you will actually have a slightly slower charging speed than in the dock. The dock allows for the charging to push past 30 watts at some point. I don't think this makes an appreciable difference. So it's really just for your information. I still don't think it is worth spending $129 for this dock. Now, any of the versions and the colors that you're getting, you will get a huge half of a speaker. Now, this size, this small size here, it really hides the half, the, the weight of the speaker. The Phantom 2 from the Devil A still holds the crown for an unbelievable weight to size ratio, but this is still gonna come across as feeling pretty dense. You're getting quite a lot of material for the money you're spending. Now, in terms of connectivity, this is, as I stated, a Bluetooth speaker. The Bluetooth version used is 5.0. It also uses Wi-Fi, which enables connection to a couple of streaming devices, notably uh, Spotify Connect, Diesel, there's Cubas, and if you have your own library, it will also support UPnP, and it is also drone ready. Now, or more conveniently, if you are using Apple devices, AirPlay 2 can take anything on your Apple devices and play through the mania. Now, if you get out of Wi-Fi range, 
the Bluetooth will kick in and it will automatically turn on and you can pair your devices through Bluetooth to the speaker. There, there was a slight latency when I connected my iPhone to play music through either AirPlay 2 or Bluetooth, uh, but that's in terms of control. So when you scrub the song or video, there's a split second delay between when you actually land on the position you want to play and when you actually hear the sounds coming out. But when you're watching videos, for example, the sound is in perfect synchrony and you won't get any issues with lip sync. So this is more of a control lag to compensate for the wireless audio to video synchronization than of an audio lagging behind the video issue. So no lip sync issues on this Mania. Now the Mania uses the same software as the Phantom series. The interface is pretty clear and it's simple. It's quite easy to use. Setup was actually completed easily and I could pair the Mania with the software uh, quite quickly. Now if there was a software update, which in my case there was, it will perform that update within a couple of minutes and from there on, the pretty interface takes over and the controls for the speaker uh, is handled without much fuss at all. But one thing notable about the software is that you will notice that there is an EQ setting which you can set for the Mania as with the Devilay Phantoms. There is a preset flat EQ or you can use the voice preset which highlights the voice by lowering bass all the way down and boosting treble just slightly two notches, right? Otherwise, you can set custom values by increasing or decreasing the bass and treble up or minus six. If you don't want to meddle with the software to control the speaker, there are actually physical buttons on the speaker for you to control the speakers with. Now, if you look along this handlebar of the speaker, there are three tactile controls on either side of the handlebars. On one side, you will have the uh, play and uh, pause button, and there's the volume up and down button. Now, these buttons are actually hard to click, but that's because the unit is IPX4 rated, and in order to withstand water splashes, these buttons, they actually cannot be uh, real buttons. They have to be hidden behind some kind of rubber ceiling. Now, on the other side of the handle strap, you'll find another three buttons for power, and then there's a Bluetooth connection pairing, and you'll find one dedicated button to show up the battery life. Strange thing is that when you click on the battery life button here, you got to go to the other side before you will see these four LED indicators indicating the battery life. And below the button, you will get a physical slider to disable the mic. And finally, you will have a USB-C port for charging. Now, like every other Devilay speaker out there, this is a very well-built speaker, dense and packing a crazy amount of amplification power for a portable power speaker. Now, if you're looking for the best of the best in terms of portable sound in a seven inch sphere, I really don't know where else you can look for, but first you probably want to look in your wallet to make sure you have that amount of money for a Bluetooth power speaker. Now you see, I can't really justify this from a value standpoint. It is just one of those speakers that if you are wondering whether you want to get it or not, you probably end up getting it, right? But if the mental image of your wife is the first thing that comes to your mind, when you hear the price tag for this Bluetooth speaker costing more than a thousand dollars, nothing I say will make you buy this anyway. So you, you can move up, right, and get the Phantom Reactors 2, which used to be called the Phantom Reactor 600 or 900, I think. And I have reviewed those before. I have also compared those with the Sonos 5. And if you're curious, you can check out that video right here. Now, it's hard to compare speakers across price range and price brackets, as well as functions, the Mania being battery powered and the reactors being a few times more costly than the Mania. But if you want to know those two, I will definitely see you over in that video.